on behalf of the organization committee i will come you sir to deliver the speech bridging the islands of protein families in sequences space using artificial sequences first of all thank you very much um, uh, for the invitation um, um, uh sir professor arjun uh, nayar and uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and also um, for the nice organization uh, speaking uh, and everybody uh, and uh, uh, it's also a nice opportunity uh, to meet up you know people um, uh, apart from tom with, with whom i had a long association um, in the uk uh, chandra uh, deep thi vargi somewhere uh, admiral soni uh, so it was very nice uh, you know getting together uh, with people after some time um uh, okay uh, uh, the talk today uh, uh, so it pertains uh, um, to uh, the computational uh, design of protein like sequences uh, uh, with a specific uh, uh, purpose um uh, once uh, the genome of an organism uh, is uh, sequenced Uh, it throws uh, open many important questions. Um, uh, uh, Saudani, uh, 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 she was talking about uh, the genes coded in the Tulsi genome, for example. So, what are the pro protein coding regions, and uh, uh, what are the functions of these proteins? How they are regulated? Uh, so what are the biological roles? What are the interacting partners? Also, what are the 3D structures? There are many, many more questions. I can uh, write. Uh, I can make you know five more slides like this, but these are only a sm small number of uh, some representative questions. And uh, uh, and you know one of the important uh, factors is the protein function. Uh, and protein function is really a vague term. Um, you know we would like to answer many questions like uh, um, um, uh, you know a bit what other uh, molecules a given protein interacts with. Uh, and uh, uh, where in the cell it works is it secreted or it's in the nucleus uh, uh, and you know what are the post translational modifications uh, and uh, 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 what are the chemical groups and you know what is the chemistry uh, that is uh, uh, elicited by the protein uh, and uh, and then we can have a better appreciation of how protein works in terms uh, of the three dimensional structure and um, so we would like to uh, Uh, address um, uh, these questions uh, and uh, you know, like how uh, yeah, seven uh, seven blind men trying to figure out uh, how an elephant looks. Uh, you know, we try to uh, you know find out various uh, facets of protein function, and we want to try and put things together in order to have a better understanding of uh, what a protein is doing uh, in the cell. Uh, and uh, 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 so after the uh, genome sequencing, uh, and uh, you know, this is the first time in the history of molecular biology, we have the sequences of proteins available in front of us. Before uh, uh, many of those proteins are ever studied in any laboratory in the world, so um, we, we 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 are uh, in a desperate need to make sense out of those sequences and try and address uh, uh, these points um, in our analysis. Um, and um, uh, the typical first step. Uh, it, it is uh, um, is to ask the question. Um, uh, so, what are the proteins that are already well studied in the laboratory uh, that are related to the protein of my interest? Uh, and uh, you know, learning a, uh, about a new protein or uh, uh, a newly discovered protein is like learning a new language. Uh, suppose. Uh, Uh, your mother tongue is a Malayalam, and you know Hindi and English apart from you know Malayalam, and uh, you want to learn uh, uh, say Gujarati, uh, and you are going to the Gujarati class. Um, so I think inherently your brain tries and find out which language I know that uh, uh, Gujarati is uh, the closest to, and that may be Hindi among among the Malayalam, English, and Hindi, uh, and uh, so you learn Gujarati in comparison to Hindi. inherently okay you know these words are exactly the same between gujarati and hindi and these words are somewhat similar sounding but not exactly same and you know, these words are entirely different so uh, once you uh, establish a relationship uh, between a protein uh, a, a newly discovered protein and the protein that is already well studied um, then uh, you begin to uh, uh, work out 
uh, uh, what are the common and differing features uh, between these two proteins and thereby learning about the newly discovered protein. And uh, so what do we have to identify the relationship between two proteins? Just the sequences and nothing else. So uh, we need to identify relatives uh, based on the uh, uh, sequence similarity. Um, so our ability to uh, add value to the genomic data boils down to our ability to identify related proteins. Um, and uh, so therefore, this is quite important. It's a very old area. Um, but um, uh, you know, believe me, if you take any uh, typical uh, genome and then you ask uh, questions on you know, what do we know about functions of proteins that are encoded in the genome, you will, you will find a substantially uh, large proportion of proteins uh, you, you don't know anything about, you know, despite all various algorithms available around. Um, uh, uh, okay, uh, the, why is this uh, a problem? Uh, you know, when you, when you don't have the relationship, you know, discovered for a, uh, for a proportion of proteins encoded in the genome, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that all these proteins are, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are, you know, unique to that organism. Uh, it, it, that could be possible, but more often, in retrospect, we know it, it just uh, shows our inability uh, uh, to you know, relate uh, uh, many of those uh, difficult proteins to the proteins that are already studied in the lab. Uh, and uh, the reason for that problem that uh, was also mentioned uh, by Salomani is that um, uh, when you have high sequence identity between uh, two proteins, with reasonably uh, good alignment, then you are very confident uh, that they are evolutionarily related. Um, and once two proteins are evolutionarily related, um, they, you, you, you can uh, you know, pretty much think that their three-dimensional structures are going to look very, very similar. And in many of the cases, um, there's a high functional similarity, same function, or even if the functions are very different, the nature of the functions uh, is uh, is. Uh, so, uh, uh, it, it is, uh, uh, the, I mean, uh, so there's a relationship between uh, those functions. Uh, and now, um, the, and the problem is that, um, you know, as you go from gene sequences to amino acid sequences, uh, which dictate the three-dimensional structure, um, um, the evolutionary divergence uh, uh, as, as measured at the gene level is very, very high. as. Uh, uh, you all know um, there is a redundancy in the genetic code. And then uh, the divergence at the amino acid sequence level is a little bit modest. Uh, and uh, the divergence at 3D, uh, at the, at the 3D structural level uh, is uh, quite low. Um, so the 3D structures are very robust and they tolerate, uh, um, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, very serious looking amino acid changes as well. Uh, so, but the problem is that uh, um, you, you can have uh, proteins that are performing uh, similar functions and similar uh, chemistry uh, that is uh, uh, catalyzed um, when the sequence identity is very, very low. Uh, they are so low, like 10%, 12%, 7%. Uh, and you can see such a level of similarity between two unrelated proteins. If you align, uh, let's say, the myoglobin and the ribonucleus, uh, and you, you can get such levels of sequence similarity. So something like you know 5%, 12%, maybe equal to 0% uh, in a way. Um, so it uh, doesn't mean anything. But we, uh, but you know, we have the challenge of uh, uh, trying to find, uh, I mean, uh, to find the related proteins despite uh, low sequence similarity uh, between the proteins. And um, I, I will, um, I mean, the problem is very uh, quite serious. I, I will show you with. Uh, an example uh, that we worked in the uh, recent times. Uh, this is a mycobacterium tuberculosis protein. Um, the, it, it, I mean, uh, uh, the assignment of uh, uh, domains uh, and the structures to MTB proteins has been done by a number of people, and they are available in the databases. Uh, and um, if you put them all together, you know, this is the result you get. Um, for about 718 proteins, MTB proteins, there is nothing uh, that uh, the people could be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean we, we can't say anything uh, about those proteins as per uh, the databases. Uh, but uh, but if, you, if you are prepared to work hard and use um, 
the sophisticated uh, sequence and structural analysis techniques, uh, uh, as such as the ones that are, uh, that are you know, developed uh, in Cambridge by uh, Tom and uh, colleagues. And we, we have teamed up together uh, with, uh, with my group in Bangalore uh, and you know, Saudamani in NCBS and also in Nagasama Chandra. We put everything together. Each of those proteins have been looked very hard. Um, and then uh, you, you will then realize that you can actually uh, uh, reduce the proportion of the dark matter very substantially. Uh, it, it just by the automatic standard blast procedures, uh, you, you don't uh, go to the extent that uh, you could uh, possibly go. So this is true for many other genomes. Um, and uh, so, um, uh, uh, OK, so there is a need. Uh, uh, to enhance the capability of detection of related proteins in the absence of uh, structure and uh, function information. And um, this is over 50-year-old area, 50-year-old you know, question. And um, what almost everybody in the past has done is to develop new alignment methods, new family profile representations, new gap penalty functions, and scoring methods, etc., etc. So uh, we uh, we did not do anything uh, in that area at all. We thought we will do something else, um, um, and uh, uh, you know that could be our, um, that could be applicable to any such method. What we decided to do is to manipulate the sequence database itself. Um, you know, can we play around with the sequences uh, that uh, of, of the I mean uh, the sequences of the natural uh, proteins uh, and uh, do something to them? in order to uh, 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 increase our capability to detect the distantly related proteins. Um, so this, uh, you know, what I'm presenting in this uh, uh, seminar is, uh, it started over 10 years ago. Uh, and I'm going to give you uh, some, you know, salient uh, features. We, we didn't work continuously for 10 years on this matter, we are off and on. So, uh, uh, so we started developing uh, some approaches. Um, to detect uh, the distant relationships between proteins, something like you know, 12 years ago, uh, and um, uh, and uh, in order to um, uh, you know in order to have an appreciation of our approach, uh, I would like you to imagine some sort of virtual sequence space. Um, in the sequence sequence space, um, uh, every uh, sequence is represented as a point, and the distance between the point. Is, a, is an indication of the evolutionary divergence uh, uh, between the two proteins. Therefore, if you see the cluster of points, it may correspond to a family, say, immunoglobulin family. And then um, you, you might also uh, you might see a cluster of immunoglobulin family. You might, uh, uh, you might see a cluster of the fibronectin family. And you know they are in the same fold. So you can you know, cover them uh, by an island, if you like, in the fold uh, space. Um, so uh, in this picture, uh, this I mean, for example, uh, this uh, blue ellipse here is an indicative of the of the WD repeat fold, and there are many families which are indicated by uh, yellow, and then uh, within yellow you have those blue dots which are indicative of the sequences in each family, uh, and 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 then you can also see um, uh, these blue dots are not only in the uh, uh, within the yellow, uh, you you will see some. Outside the yellow, these are these are the rogue members of the of the family, if you like. Uh, they are, in, you know, uh, deviating uh, uh, from the tradition. Uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, kinase sequences I encountered is looking just like a CDK, cyclin dependent kinase. Uh, but but for a cyclin dependent kinase, we all know uh, uh, that it, it 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 is a single domain gene product, just kinase domain only. But the cyclin de uh, dependent kinase, like kinase that I saw, in included the ankylin repeat region at the end terminus. So, uh, so you can, and you know, they, they, it just you know, DV, it becomes a rogue member of the cyclin uh, dependent kinase family. So uh, things like that. So you can, uh, and now, uh, and many of the uh, uh, sequence uh, search methods um, uh, exploits uh, the continuum in the sequence space. Um, uh, I mean, uh, 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 if if the proteins, let's say A and uh, C, uh, are 
are related, and they have very little sequence similarity between them. But if there is a protein B, let us say, and A and B have good sequence similarity, so you can pick up the relationships fairly easily, and B and C uh, can be picked up as related proteins fairly easily because that they too have good similarity, then uh, A is similar to B, B is similar to C, therefore you might conclude that A is similar to C. So uh, this simple principle is exploited by many sequence search methods, like Cyblas, for example. Uh, and, uh, uh, and you know uh, they are dependent on the availability uh, of such uh, rogues. In fact, these rogues are very useful in uh, detecting um, uh, the relationship between distantly related proteins. Okay, um, and uh, more than ten years ago, we developed something called as cascade cyblast. I mean, cyblast itself, you know, generated by Alshul and coworkers, uh, is extremely powerful, and. Uh, um, so when, when you have a query, you want to identify the relatives of that protein in a sequence database. You can use the Cyplus, which is an iterative and extremely powerful process. And, um, uh, um, uh, and then, um, uh, so you, you, uh, you start off from a family, let's say family A, which has some sequences. And you give something as a query, given the power of the Cyplus, uh, you may get some distantly related protein, rogues, for example. Uh, but it may not take you very far to uh, your related family. So you know what we uh, what we said in that paper uh, published in 2005 is that uh, don't stop here. Uh, I mean everybody stops after running cyclast, which is an iterative process. Uh, but uh, let, let's say if you get some 10 hits, then take each one of those 10 hits and then feed them as the query. Uh, I mean uh, the relative of your relative is also your relative. Uh, and, and so you can take each one of these, and then uh, let's say there are 10 hits. Give, you run, you run uh, a cyblast 10 more times, each time you know, giving uh, 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 one of the hits as the query. You get more hits. Give them as the query. You get more. And then you can, you can just walk in the sequence space like this. You can you know, hop in the sequence space, and then you, you might reach your related family. Um, it has to be done extremely carefully. If you, if you are very enthusiastic if you if you jump all over the place you will go to all kinds of families uh, you may go from the ribonucleus to myoglobin also no problem <laughs> but you have to do it in a strategic way it is uh, it took a long time to uh, properly uh, learn you know how to do this correctly uh, and uh, we were we were only happy for some time because uh, Oh, well, uh, this is, uh, you, you know, before I uh, tell you why we became unhappy, <laughs> uh, this is one of the examples. Um, uh, um, you know, you start, uh, I mean, uh, you, you may not be able to read it well. This is some uh, family from the motor proteins. Um, and then uh, you, you can run, if you run cyblast once, you get these hits. Uh, you know, many people stop here. All that we are saying is that give each one of them as the queries. Uh, as, oops, sorry, I'm pressing the wrong button. Okay. Uh, and then you, you will, uh, I mean, what we call as the third generation run, it uh, expands, and then uh, uh, more, and then you know, in the fourth generation of the cascade blast, it becomes, uh, it becomes nearly complete um, uh, from uh, the SCOP database, for example. So this was fine, but uh, until uh, we discovered that um, those uh, rogue sequences are not available uh, uh, for um, every pair of the related protein families. So what if you don't have any hopping spots in the sequence space? This was our problem. Uh, so it doesn't matter. So then um, uh, the power of the method uh, is uh, greatly dependent on the availability of the sequences, intermediate related sequences. So uh, what we thought uh, uh, in the early 2000, I mean, in around 2011-12 sort of time, is that uh, we will grow them artificially. That is. Uh, we will learn the sequence variation within the natural members of, of the family A, uh, and then try and generate sequences in the computer uh, which uh, are you know, related only to the family A, thereby expanding the domain of the family A, uh, and in the hope that if you do it for all the families, the inter-family space in the sequence space uh, could come down. and. Uh, uh, now, um, uh, can Mr. Blast now make it? Um, so that was uh, that was what we tried, uh, and um, it did work um, in many. It was a bit better than before. It seemed to have worked, 
but um, all of our uh, joy only short lived <laughs> uh, you know because um, uh, uh, well uh, yeah before i tell you why uh, again we became unhappy i will tell you how we did this how did we generate the artificial sequences uh, that is the, that you know corresponds uh, to a particular family so you start off with the multiple sequence arrangement of the uh, protein family we represent them as position specific scoring matrix uh, and then uh, you know this is the uh, alignment position here and these are the 20 amino acids uh, and these numbers indicate of the extent of occurrence of each of the 20 amino acids in each alignment position so uh, we employed a stochastic process in, in which at every alignment position we assigned uh, 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 a residue you know one of the 20 residue types uh, that is sensitive to the ex extent of occurrence of each of the 20 amino acid residues. Uh, our stochastic process is quite simple. Uh, say, let us say you take the alignment position 5, uh, and if you add all these numbers, you can see the leucine occurs uh, you know, more often than any other, uh, any other residue there. And then you add, if you add all these numbers, you get number 55. So you just imagine a string of 55 centimeters length, and then you mark up uh, 3 centimeters for alanine, Two centimeters for arginine and eight centimeters for leucine, etc., etc. Then you close your eyes and then you touch the string somewhere, and then you write the residue you want, uh, uh, you, you know, that you touch in that position. So you do that, uh, or you can imagine uh, that as uh, like a roulette wheel. Uh, uh, you can <coughs> you can imagine the roulette wheel at every <coughs> alignment position, and in which the sector area corresponds to uh, the extent of occurrence of each of the twenty amino acids. So what you can do is that you can, for, for every alignment position, you can spin the roulette wheel, and then you can keep on writing down the residues at every alignment position. And then that way you make the sequence. It's not as though you can make L, P, F only. You can also like go up like this, L, S, D, etc. So at every alignment position, you generate lots and lots of residues. Um, uh, it's sort of a constrained uh, random. It's not very free random, not 100% random. It's sort of a constraint uh, that's uh, coming there. And these sequences, these artificial sequences, are not uh, yet the genuine uh, uh, sequences that we will take forward. What we do is that, um, OK, uh, so we start from a family. Uh, this trapezium shows a family. And then use the ruler wheel approach. You get lots and lots of uh, artificial sequences. These are the offsprings of this parent. Now we challenge each of these offsprings uh, using reverse blast approach, uh, uh, and then try and find your parent. Okay, uh, from the pool, uh, for, uh, this uh, you know this may be some some thousand profiles, uh, thousand different protein families. It has to go and find this particular parent. Even uncle and aunts are okay. That is another family uh, 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 with the same fold uh, is also okay. Uh, uh, but it shouldn't go and find, if you give a globin, it shouldn't go and find a ribonuclease or something. <laughs> uh, completely unrelated. And only if an offspring is able to find a parent, then only it is considered as a genuine offspring. And the, the sequence, uh, uh, I mean, a potential offspring which is not able to find a parent is discarded. Uh, so for every family, you, you have uh, an expansion, a, a virtual, artificial uh, expansion of the family. Um, and. Uh, so, uh, and, and that seemed to have worked well. Um, you know, all these, uh, you know, the yellow streaks, these greenish yellow streaks are the real proteins, and then these blue ones are the artificial uh, sequences. So, um, they, they seem to link uh, very nicely. We have done all the uh, searches and things. We, are, uh, we became a bit happy again uh, that we are able to address the problem. Uh, but uh, there's still a problem. So, uh, artificial sequence. Uh, artificial growth of a protein family, uh, uh, in there, we, did, we do not have any control over directionality. That is, uh, we would like, uh, uh, you know, this part to grow, uh, this part to grow, so that uh, jumping from A to B becomes, becomes possible in the sequence space. But what if it grows like this? Uh, we have absolutely no control. So then, that, then it is ineffective for us. So uh, again, we were unhappy. <laughs> So we, we thought we will do something else now. So we, we now have, um, uh, I mean, uh, we now have protein families in the same fold. Uh, and then we have these um, islands now. We have sparse or void regions here. So uh, instead of 
uh, blindly growing the family, we thought we will build bridges of artificial sequences. So we want we wanted to uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, ideally we wanted to take all the families within a fold, and then between uh, any two families we want to build bridges. We are not able to walk from one family to another family. Hopefully, if we build bridges of artificial sequences like this, we can walk over the bridge and reach the other family. Uh, and so uh, we have modified our algorithm. Um, so this is the filling in void and sparse regions in protein sequence space using protein-like artificial sequences. Um, so uh, now instead of you know the previous method, you, ha you had only single parent uh, for the offsprings. Uh, now we have two parents, family one and family two, which we already know are related. I mean, um, our, our method, I mean, a word of caution here, our method is not requiring the three-dimensional structural information at all. Only thing it needs is that we, I mean, we want to, uh, I mean, we, we need to know uh, that two families are related for sure, that's all. Uh, there are many instances, if you look at the literature, that we know two families are related, uh, but no structure. That's also okay. We, we can use, uh, uh, you can use that information here. So you, um, so we have family one and family two, which are the same fold in this in our uh, exercise, and then we we can you know represent them as position specific query matrix as well as hidden Markov models, um, which uh, uh, which shows the uh, variation in the sequence sequences in that family, and then you can use you can align them. Uh, you uh, all these uh, were previous developments in the lab. Uh, Krishna they developed align hash method, uh, and then. We played around with the scoring scheme, so it's the matrix versus matrix alignment. It's the HMM versus HMM alignment here, uh, and then uh, we 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 went back to our roulette wheel now. But each of the roulette wheel uh, for for every alignment position now encompasses now it covers the information on sequence variation in the two families, uh, family family alignment. So we 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 spun the wheels like um, like we did before. And then, um, um, so what we did was now we have two parents, uh, and then uh, now all the uh, potential offsprings should go and find. Uh, oh, uh, now it becomes find your parent. It becomes parents now <laughs> because two, two parents, uh, and then it has to find both this and that, uh, and uncles and aunts. Okay, again, uh, and uh, um, and then um, uh, if if it finds uh, the two parents and no. Uh, non-parent is found as parent, uh, uh, then um, uh, that is included. So these are considered to be uh, the bridging sequences between the two parents. So we have done that, so we wanted to uh, assess. Um, um, uh, and in order to, in order to assess, uh, we want, we had applied um, this method to every pair of related uh, families that we know in this, uh, with known structure. So we went to SCOP database, for example, to, uh, where we have uh, families within each fold. Uh, and um, suppose uh, uh, there are three families, A, B, C, in a particular fold. We, we tried to build bridges between A and B, A and C, and B and C. We tried. I, I'm not saying that we built. Uh, we tried to do that. Um, uh, and. Um, for every uh, multi-membered fold, if if a, if a fold has only one uh, uh, one family, then we can only artificially grow it, uh, and uh, there is no possibility of there is no question of building bridges. Uh, so there are a substantial number of folds that we know, uh, and what happened? Um, uh, the natural sequences, that is natural protein sequences, is about 3.6 million, and to which we uh, 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 we have uh, generated 4. Point, almost 4.7 million artificial sequences, genuine offsprings. And then uh, we made two databases. One database, what everybody in the world uses, the database of natural sequences, that is about 3.6 million. And then the, uh, then the database of argument, uh, I mean, we call it as argumented database, uh, uh, which includes uh, natural and artificial sequences. Uh, and then uh, we took every query from SCOP. Uh, we know that what are the right answers and wrong answers before we make query. Therefore, we can assess our method. So we, take, we took every query, and then we searched in the database of natural sequences. And the same query we searched in the database of argument, uh, I mean, which is argumented with, uh, with the artificial sequences. And then we asked the question, are we doing any better by searching in the argumented database? 
Uh, and he, here is an example for two of, of the folds. Uh, that's, um, it's, a, it's a ferritin like fold. Uh, you know, this is the, I mean, the y-axis shows the extent of correct relationship uh, uh, recognition. Uh, when you search the control database, which is a database of natural sequences. And then this is the result for the argument. These, uh, these new, uh, uh, new relationships uh, have been you know, picked up. Uh, and similarly, this shows for the beta to file fold. But when you consider entire data set, and there's a sensitivity uh, that's shown in the x-axis for the database of natural uh, sequences, and that's for the search in the, in the argumented database. This is a 45 degrees line. If you see a point above the line, which means that uh, uh, the sensitivity for the argumented database is you know, better than uh, the sensitivity when you search the natural sequence database. Uh, and you can see uh, there is uh, a large number of points above 45 degrees line. Interestingly, uh, there are some points below 45 degrees line as well. Um, but you know, overall, uh, it seems uh, that um, uh, the sensitivity is much better. We are, that is, we are able to detect the relatives much better if you search in the database of, which is augmented with the, uh, with the design sequences. So um, now, um, if you think about it, you might, uh, you might think that I'm cheating here. Uh, you know, what am I doing? Um, you know, I'm saying that there, uh, there, is no, uh, there is no bridge between two islands. Uh, uh, and therefore, we are not able to travel from one island to the other island. And now, I'm building the bridge C, we, we are able to travel. Well, that is only expected, right? Uh, 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 we, we have built the bridges, and I'm saying that the sensitivity is better now. Uh, there is nothing uh, um, that is uh, unexpected here. Actually, sometimes when things don't work, that uh, you know, saves your project. <laughs> this is one of those examples. I want to recall that I said we tried to build bridges between all known related families. Uh, and what happens, the way our algorithm works is that for many pairs of families which are known to be related, we were unable to generate even a single sequence linking those two families. Okay, for some, some feature with those two families. And um, uh, so uh, uh, not all possible combinations were exploited. So, uh, and uh, what happened, uh, this is one of those, uh, one of those uh, uh, pairs. This is a C-terminal domain of, some, uh, of, uh, of the RPA32 family, uh, and which is, which, has this, which is in the same superfamily as the Lexair repressor, uh, the DNA binding domain there. And they are the same fold, they are the same superfamily, they are believed to be distantly related. Uh, they are believed to be evolved from common ancestry, most likely. Uh, and we were unable to generate any artificial sequences uh, linking these two families. This is just one of the many, many failed cases. Now, uh, when you, if you take the database of natural sequences, and then you give the query from this family, you don't, you don't get there at all. Whatever method you use, jackhammer, side blast, doesn't matter. Which one, whichever one you use, uh, uh, just purely sequence based method, you don't go from here to there. Uh, and which is also seen in our uh, uh, database of natural sequences. We had used jackhammer, side blast. We were not able to reach. Now, what happened when we searched uh, for a query from here, uh, in, in, uh, and then we searched in the database of uh, argument, uh, which is augmented with the artificial sequence, natural plus artificial. What do you expect? Do you, do you expect us to travel um, from here to here? Any of the students? We don't, we don't have the bridge. Can we still travel? We thought we won't be able to travel. But believe me, we traveled. <laughs> we pulled out all those side blast out, jackhammer outputs, and then looked at what, what is happening there. Same query. Uh, we, don't, we are not able to travel when, when we search in the artificial sequences, in the database of natural sequences. But when you included artificial sequences, which did not include the bridging sequences here, how can we travel? Uh, it should be the same result, right? Then what happened? Um, uh, from this family, we were able to travel to Marag transcription regulator family using this, using this bridge. And then uh, in, the, in the cascaded search, from here, we were able to travel there. And these design, but if you, if you delete these design sequences here, you, you can't go from here to here and then go from here to there. 
therefore you are not able to travel from here to here. You need uh, these two bridges, uh, and these two bridges, apart from this island, uh, uh, served as some sort of a roundabout bridge to go from here to there. That's why uh, I think our paper got accepted. <laughs> Something that did not work <laughs> has really enabled uh, 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 some encouragement in the mind of the referees to accept our paper, I think. <laughs> and um, so I think, uh, uh, I mean, this also shows uh, the continuum, uh, I mean, the abstract um, imagination that we started off with, uh, that is the continuum of the sequence space. Um, and so, you know, when you, when you drive from your work to your home, uh, and, you know, suddenly when there is a road repair somewhere, and then you take a diversion, uh, and the same thing, you know, the side blast does, uh, uh, you know, when you, uh, in order to, you know, reach uh, this family. Okay. Uh, so, so we are, uh, and this is the actual details. Uh, these are, the, there are many, many intermediately related sequences, which are design sequences involved if you carefully look at how the side blast uh, or the jackhammer has you know, hopped in the sequence space. Uh, and um, so, um, uh, we, 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 you know, that was uh, uh, extremely encouraging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and there are also uh, some of the, uh, we, we, we got, you know, more than we bargained for, actually. Um, we, uh, I mean, all this is fine, but everything in scope, uh, structural space, does it really work in the real world, you know? The, Actual, you know, in the real life, you need to search in a big sequence database and no structures, nothing. So, I mean, these, uh, these beautiful sequences, these artificial sequences, protein-like sequences can be included in any database you like, any genome database, and, you know, you can include it in SwissProt, EMBL, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. Anywhere you can, uh, and then you can have a query and then you can have some results. Uh, and uh, your search process may transit through our design sequences. So what happened is that there are many, uh, we have included it, we, we have made a database of all sequences in PFAM, which not necessarily have known structures, for example, uh, and then we started giving queries. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, the bonus we got is that you give a query, uh, which is of unknown structure, you may get a set of hits, uh, real protein sequence hits, which are also of unknown structure. But when you look at the, your output, uh, how the program went by, you will see some uh, transiently some uh, some you know some of the design sequences. So these design sequences have some patterns, and those patterns have some structure. So you are uh, you are now you know tempted to assign the same fold as that of the patterns of those design sequences on, on which the side blast has walked uh, in order to reach uh, uh, um, uh, your protein of unknown structure. Uh, from starting from a protein of unknown structure again. So we are able to assign the folds of both the query and the hit because it walked through. There are many, many instant, uh, instances. So these are acting as spies, actually, uh, and you know, try and relate. Uh, 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 this is you know, one of the examples, uh, one, one of the periplasmic protein, like protein, and then it, it reached, uh, uh, um, it, you know, um, it, I mean, it could, it could pick up number of hits through uh, uh, many of the designed intermediates whose parents are here. And therefore, we are able to assign the uh, fold to both the query and the hits. And there are many uh, um, protein families which are uh, uh, assigned uh, uh, the term domain of unknown function. Um, so that is, uh, these are the sequences which make a family. Uh, but you know, nobody knows what they do because they occur in diverse organisms in many cases. They should be doing something very important, but you know nobody knows what they are doing. There are thousands of families like this, and um, uh, so we we set out to uh, ask the question: uh, can, uh, can we find the relatives of these duffs? Um, and you know, thereby um, uh, we we stand a chance of assigning some functional roles to these uh, domain families. So uh, we had uh, we had employed uh, our method in addition to other methods. And about 600 and 600 uh, duffs are probably de-duffed now. Um, and uh, I will show only one example. Actually, the recognition of relationship doesn't always guarantee recognition of function. Um, uh, I mean, the, the relationship could be a step towards function recognition, but it doesn't always guarantee. Here I'm showing one example, the duff 1572, which is shown to be related to the metalloenzyme. 
and then you thread the sequence onto the metal enzyme structure, and then you want to ensure, uh, uh, at least you know computationally, uh, uh, whether it has uh, um, uh, the features uh, uh, that uh, uh, that are important for the eliciting the metal enzyme function. So all the residues are conserved or conservatively substituted, grouped as mutation. So all these are the circumstantial uh, uh, reasons for you to believe that we are actually DUF1572 could be a metal enzyme. Okay, uh, there are many, there are 600 and odd more examples like this, I'm showing only one. Um, okay, we have a database called EnrichD. Um, uh, you can come and, uh, you can you know, visit this database and it, it, is, it can, it, you can tell your protein family of interest, it can enrich it, uh, artificially enrich it, or you, you, may, you may have a query uh, and you can use uh, this artificial sequence uh, containing uh, databases uh, and then search and try and find the relationship. Uh, I mean, we, we, don't, uh, we don't say here that um, uh, instead of searching in the database of natural sequences, you include our sequences and search. Uh, uh, we are saying do both. Uh, you know that uh, uh, the sensitivity plot I showed you some time ago with the 45 degrees line? Interestingly, uh, for fewer queries, uh, you do better in searching only in the database of natural sequences. When you put in the artificial sequences, you do less well. That's for a small number of sequences. So to play safe, uh, we are recommending in this website that uh, you can search for your query in both the databases and then take the union set uh, of the hits from, from both. I think I will stop here. I, I just wanted to conclude by saying that uh, um, to create a continuum of sequence there for a fold, we developed an approach to purposefully design intermediate sequences between families using information in the uh, uh, in the profiles of the families, we have shown that sequences of artificial proteins uh, help us to identify distant relationships. Uh, and uh, this is a generic uh, uh, method. It does, it's not dependent on um, uh, the program or the algorithm uh, that you use to find the relationship. It could be, it is, a, it is a manipulation of the database, so it doesn't matter what method you use. Uh, and uh, uh, the practical application of such designed intermediate sequences aid in recognition of functions of proteins that are written. So it's not a, uh, it's not a um, structure uh, structure recognition program from seek not particularly structure recognition program. Uh, as I told you, uh, you can you can take these sequences and then you can put in in um, any uh, sequence database of your choice, uh, and um, uh, 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 and then um, you can do the search in the in the database, and uh, uh, it, it is, you know, basically it is uh, the relationship detection method. Uh, but uh, as a bonus, you may also end up assigning 3D uh, folds uh, to the queries and kits. Uh, I think uh, I'll stop here. But oh, uh, the people, very important. Um, the much of the work on the, I mean, it, it all started with, you know, Sandhya Sankaran, um, who, who started in my group and then went to Sadhani's group. Uh, as a PhD student, then she's back in my group. Uh, and uh, so in the first and last, uh, and then in the recent work she's involved, and uh, uh, so Richa Mudgal uh, did uh, much of the work I presented today, and Gayatri Kumar is uh, now you know, following up in various ways. We, we are uh, addressing uh, questions at the genome uh, level um, um, for the various genomes. It's in collaboration with you know, Saudamani, who is here, and also with you know, Nagas Mahachandra. Uh, I think I, oh, I'll stop here. One more. Uh, well, this is very important. Uh, DBT and TSD supported our uh, work. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, well, I'm very proud of this picture just prepared by another student, Sudha. Uh, all except the grass you see are the molecular structures. Uh, and you can see Tom's gamma crystal here looking like flowers. And the WD repeat another flower. And uh, I forgot what it is, but it looks like butterfly. <laughs> uh, and these uh, red fruits are the glycyl residues uh, in the space fill model. Uh, with that, I will stop. Oh, uh, and then I'll say thank you. <laughs> Nandi, sir. <laughs> well, this is for those who don't know in you know, Malayalam, if that includes myself, this is you know, thank you in Malayalam. <laughs> okay, open for questions. Your island hopping is a very interesting idea, but of course when we're sequence hopping in real sequences that form proteins, we're making the assumption that the free energy, which is a balance between the folded and the unfolded states, 
Um, nature has solved that, and so we don't worry about it. As soon as you go to islands which are not real islands, yeah. um, and the example is the program you participated in writing, uh, SDN, yeah. uh, we have to consider the unfolded state. Yeah. In fact, you have to do a free energy cycle, as, sure. as you and others pointed out. Yes. I wonder whether there's any way of doing that as you go to an island you're not sure about. You really need to know that you've retained the free energy advantage of the forward state over the unfolded state. In the design sequence. In the design okay. sequence. It doesn't matter in the others, because yeah. we know makes a soul. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, it's, uh, um, um, many people have asked this question, uh, and uh, uh, at the initial stage, I, 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 you know, um, during this work, we did not worry about it because uh, the sole purpose of designing uh, uh, these sequences is that they, s they simply have to bridge uh, the natural families, which we already know are related, uh, and, gener and then contribute uh, to, um, to enhancing the continuum of the sequence space. Uh, there is no guarantee at all. Uh, well, there's, we didn't even take a uh, single step to ensure uh, these, inter these design sequences are actually folded. And uh, you know, leave alone that they are folded like uh, their parents. Um, uh, we, we only wanted them to serve as uh, the intermediate related sequence. Uh, as long as it is served that purpose, we did not worry at that stage. Uh, now we are worried. <laughs> uh, now, now the further work by Gayatri Kumar uh, is uh, uh, is you know addressing those points. But for the purposes of uh, simply the homology detection or the relationship detection, uh, we thought uh, it, it doesn't uh, matter when you actually synthesize these proteins in the lab if they don't even fold. Um, I, I thought it is doesn't matter um, for the purposes of the uh, uh, of the homology detection. I wonder if, if you could have a high throughput SDM kind of calculation. Right. You find your stepping stones or your insecure islands. Yeah. Um, if you took each of the sequences um, where there's a substitution and, and eliminated those where there was a big decrease okay. in free energy, right. um, in, in other words, you would run something like SDM on an amino acid basis. Yeah. I wonder if you could eliminate some of the uncertainties. Yes, yeah, I, I think look at it as a stepping yeah. stone. Yeah. If, if the stone you're stepping mm -hmm. between the islands is not secure, yes. surely you're, you're going to sink. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very important. Uh, if, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, what we are not sure about, you know, suppose you see a wide space between two islands, two real families. Uh, at least two reasons uh, uh, I can think of. One, uh, as you as you as you mentioned, those intermediately related sequences are not stable uh, enough, and therefore the nature, uh, uh, you know, uh, could not you know populate that part of the fold space. That's one reason. Another reason is that actually they are there, and uh, it's just that we don't know yet. Um, uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, there was another exercise. It, it was done uh, uh, by uh, you know, Rich, um, by uh, you know, Gayatri Kumar. Um, we removed some real sequences from protein families, and then we pretended as though that's it, that's what we have, and then we uh, designed using this method. And then, on an average, uh, I mean, there are various ways of doing our work, uh, and. In the most standard way that we uh, set out to do, we found about you know 50 to 60 percent sequence identity between uh, the real protein sequences and uh, uh, the uh, and the, uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, design sequences. Um, so uh, what I am not sure when we do it at the whole uh, database level now for the complete uh, fold space, uh, we don't know the reason why we have. Uh, 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 the low population or the zero population regions. Any one of these two could be true. After all, the, the number of proteins uh, with known structure that we used in our analysis, that we could use in our analysis, is so meager compared to uh, the proteins that we are interested in learning about. 
uh, but uh, I think your points are uh, worrying. <laughs> you, you have given me one more reason to worry about, and maybe I will write you know, one more paper when I present uh, <laughs> the work <laughs> in a meeting like this. But yeah, absolutely important. Uh, actually, the Gayatri Kumar, uh, who is a third year student, is you know, looking into uh, the energetics matters. and uh, that, uh, Please give me some more time, I will answer your question. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. It connects with our work in a different way. Yeah, I, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, I'm very keen to learn more mm -hmm. about this. Um, because, you know, as you're aware, uh, we have made proteins from sequences that nature never expressed. Yes, sir. Uh, now, there's a huge body of literature uh, around that. And we frankly do not know how many of them are really useful. And they will be structurally stable. And the energetics that goes into this kind of discussion. Uh, and then it's not a question, it's, it's kind of a sort of discussion of uh, learning. How do we narrow this space to know what are the most useful and most stable proteins mm -hmm. from a large possibility that you get? Okay. Yeah. Uh, would you have any comment on that? Uh, yes, yeah, that, that's uh, uh, quite related things. to what Tom yeah, yeah. has asked uh, just now. Yes. Um, because you, you're creating artificial proteins, okay, creating yeah. bridges, and you know, from sequences that probably do not exist, but you know, you're yeah. generating those. Yeah, uh, so yeah. So, so, you know, so it's quite close. Okay, you know, sometimes uh, about 50, 60 percent sequence. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, well, the, the, there are uh, lots of in, important developments by various people uh, that will happen, including many developments from Tom's group. Um, we could, uh, uh, there are you know, ways to assess the foldability of the protein from sequence and it, it, um, it's uh, impossible to synthesize everything in the lab and then you know, test out each one. Uh, obviously, we have to shortlist uh, by uh, um, uh, using some uh, computational developments uh, which will assess the, the, the stability in general or rather the globularity in the first place. And then um, whether it could really take the fold of the parent. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are, you know, Gayatri Kumar is uh, using some of those methods. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The moment between the, uh, uh, the islands, it seems, uh, is there some evolutionary, uh, you did it artificially, but uh, can we say that nature also had some uh, <laughs> Went through this process. Oh, no, I can't say that at all. <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, it is absolutely no way is mimicry of the nature. No, uh, it's just uh, you know <laughs> giving a shot with our computers and uh, I mean this the evolution has gone through several you know very very large number of years and uh, and you know it's not it's it's not easy to understand how. Uh, how the evolution really take you know what are the pathways uh, when you go from one protein to another protein from bacterial bacterial uh, homolog to human homolog or something uh, that's an extremely complex process and uh, my uh, the method I presented today is uh, it's not intended to be the mimicry of how the mother nature is doing it's just some practical utility that's all. You know, this, you know, what I call as a bridge are the set of sequences which are uh, not of, I mean, as of now, they are not a real protein sequences. They are generated in the computer. Uh, and these uh, protein sequences uh, enable the detection of relationship between two real proteins. Uh, so uh, what I call as bridge are just set of sequences that are simply generated in the computer. That's all. Whether you consider that size of the elements present in family without size? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, it's uh, indirectly considered. You, you have large protein families and small protein families. Uh, you know, the main, I think the features of large protein families is such that generally sequence distribution will be very high. Uh, that is, you can, can have, uh, if you take globins, one of the large families, you, you have two globins with uh, you know, seven percent sequence identity, and you have two globins with ninety-nine percent sequence identity. And uh, our methods uh, will allow, um, if it is uh, 
uh, large distribution of signal. The information content is high. You you know you know how very different sequences uh, are uh, you know are the members of the uh, of the same family, uh, and which is very good for the profile generation and the representation of the protein family. If you have a small family, usually the sequence identities are high uh, between pairs of proteins, and uh, information content is therefore low, uh, and therefore the effectiveness of the method which is dependent uh, critically on the effectiveness of sequence, uh, artificial sequence generation will also be low. Uh, so we have various factors. Uh, but you know, uh, the good thing is that it, this can be done uh, you know, periodically and also involving protein families of not necessarily known structure. Uh, you know, Eugene Kunin and co-workers have, for example, published a number of papers uh, of the related protein families of uh, yet unknown structure. We can use them all. And, Thereby, we can expand the, uh, um, the we can expand the continuum. Uh, we can improve the continuum of the sequence space. Uh, so we, we are, you know, hoping to do all that in the coming years. Just one comment. Uh, from the, the sample of proteins that look energetically very unfavorable, most unlikely candidates. And if they're not too long, how about uh, chemically synthesizing them? <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to see, uh, <laughs> you know, how they turn up finally. Um, yeah, we, we have done something on this slide. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, definitely I'm very interested 